The majorities of the entry to the slasher booms of the early 80s had a male serial killer with mom issues, taking it out on innocent women. Few of them ever switched it up and gave us a female killer, but this one from Australia certainly did. I am Thorstein from Cinema Terror, and this is the 1980 exploitation film Nightmares. Nightmares starts out back in 1963 where a young girl named Katty is witnessing her mother have sex with a man. This disturbs her, and later on when she's riding along with her mom and her boyfriend in a car, and she sees him touch her mother's leg, Katty tries to stop him. This causes them to get in a car accident that will claim the life of her mother. Fast forward to the then present day of 1980, and Katty has grown up to become a young woman. To try to distance herself from her tragic past, she has changed her name to Helen and is now trying to make it as an actress. She gets a break when she is cast in a big stage production called Comedy of Death. She becomes friendly with the co-star Terry, and things seem to look promising for her, but before the stage play gets to premiere, gruesome murders involving the cast and crew starts to occur. <laughs> Nightmares is not to be confused with a horror anthology of the same title from 1983 or to be confused with Michel Suave's 1987 Stage Fright, as Stage Fright is also a title that Nightmares has been known by. The third familiar sounding title for this is Nightmare on the Street, which was what they went by for the German market. This Nightmares is the work of director John D. Lamond, who up until that point had done a few erotic exploitation films like the ABC's Love and Sex and Felicity. Lamond had obviously taken inspiration from the trends that was going on in the United States after the huge success of John Carpenter's Halloween. But Lemon was also smart enough to give his film a unique element in making the killer female, and he used the same type of motivation for her as we would see in so many male killers in that she becomes psychologically damaged by seeing her mother be sexually active. <laughs> Being the cause of her mother's death didn't help either of course, and while she's trying to live a normal life, she is haunted by terrifying nightmares, and has an intimacy problem towards the opposite sex. She can be kind one second, then turn off emotionally the next, which is displayed several times in a relationship with Terry. That's pretty much her entire character though, as the film fails to dwell any deeper into her psyche, which they definitively should have, as the attempt at going the more suspenseful route kind of fails when you told the audience who the killer is right from the start. The point of view shots from the killer's perspective is nice to look at, but they don't work that well as they try to have it both ways with trying to be psychological and a mystery. The murder scenes doesn't just look visually good, but they're also quite gruesome and there is no lack of nudity either. They could have used a bit more creativity however as the kill scenes are basically all pretty much the same. A young couple is having intercourse, and she strikes with a broken piece of glass, slashing the innocent lovemakers while they are naked and at their most vulnerable. The nice visuals and exploitation elements weren't enough to keep my interest going to the very end, as the story is too poor. We spend a lot of time around this stage play, the drama behind it, and the bitter love-hate relationship between its director and a sleazy newspaper critic. Perhaps the theater setting just doesn't work for me, as I also seem to rate Dario Argento's opera and Michel Suave's stage fright lower than others. For you are surely not an actress's big brown freckle! And for your further edification, that means... Asshole. I would have also preferred a bit more restraint when it came to the usage of quick flashy flashbacks. It does make up for some of its poor storytelling by having a rather quick pace to it. It is easy to be entertained by this, even if you might not care all that much about where the plot is going. The soundtrack by Brian May is also nice and adds to the experience. May, not to be confused with the legendary musician in Queen, has done work on plenty of other notable Australian genre films, including Patrick, Road Games, Turkey Shoot, and of course, the two first Mad Max movies. Nightmares is a nice find for fans of slasher films. It provides all the horror elements that you would want, and the Aussie flavor to it does give it a different feel. I just wish that they had decided on going either with a whodunit storyline, or went further into the psyche of the catty Helen character. Nightmares is a film they had fun with, but will probably not revisit it again in the future. Nightmares gets approved and bloody score of 3 out of 5. Who else out there has seen Nightmares, and what were your thoughts on this one? 
I've asked this before, but it's a question I cannot be asked enough. So if you know any obscure exploitation films that more people need to check out, then make sure you let me and others know about them in the comment section below. And if you can't get enough of Nightmares, then I do have a video review up for the other Nightmares, the 1983 horror anthology one as well. That's a fun one, so make sure you check that one out. As always, thank you for spending your time here on the dark parts of YouTube, and keep coming back if you want to hear me explore more movies of the weird, obscure and forgotten here on Cinema Terror.